Hi, I'm Brian Karras. And I want to share some tips and tricks and things I've learned along the way that can help you make your jobs a little faster and more efficient when you're doing advanced camera designs and trying to bring your business to the next level. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Let's take a look at some considerations for doing LPR-based camera designs. So similar to our face recognition designs, we can start by going into our tasks uh, task definitions here for our parameters and we're going to choose the ANPR drop down from the menu here we used face rec before uh, so here you can see we can configure some of the parameters that would be driven by the specifications for whatever we're using for our LPR program so I'm going to do this design based on a, a typical North American plate so you can see here we specify this as 300 millimeters wide uh, if your plate was different you can adjust that or uh, maybe instead of going by the plate distance, you've got specs that are driven by character, height, minimum, or maximum. So uh, you could click the radio button here and, and do your math off of character heights. We're just going to use plate width. That's pretty common. And um, let's just say for round number purposes, we have a system that wants 80 pixels um, across the plate. That's the equivalent of 266 pixels per meter. And... Um, even before we get into the design, the actual design phase that we'll show in a minute here, you can do a little bit of you know, quick math. If we're doing 266 pixels per meter, and let's say we have a 1080p camera, uh, so that's gonna be 1920 pixels horizontally across the camera. So if we divide 1920 by 266, that tells us we can cover an area about, about seven meters wide um, with a 1080p camera, best case scenario, uh, you know, a little over 20 feet wide, couple lanes of traffic, fundamentally feels right. We might decide to bump our design up to a higher resolution camera, but even just from right here, you can start to do some quick mental math and make sure that the uh, that your metrics are going to work out. So you can also specify maximum downward angle and offset angle. This is one in particular, I think even more so than face recognition. This offset angle uh, from the center line can become very important and drive a lot of things in your design, as we'll show you here, because unlike face recognition, where it's often possible to put a camera directly in line with the flow of people, say like above a doorway, it's much harder to put a camera directly in the middle of a road. So you're almost always going to be dealing with this offset here. Um, and again, we'll show you how this, this can potentially be one of the largest impacting factors uh, in your ANPR designs and, and why visualizing that becomes so helpful and so important. So we'll stick with these parameters here, 25 degree maximum downward angle, 30 degree offset, uh, pretty typical values. So we're gonna close that out and then to make sure that my design is using those parameters, I'm gonna change the camera task to the ANPR drop down here and you see things start to change. Um, now, since we're doing an ANPR design, let's go ahead and uh, we'll throw in a couple of cars to our design here. We'll pick, say, one car. We'll, we'll do this based on a two-lane design. Let's say we got a car and an SUV, you know, how they might look or approach. So, so this is, again, where you see it's going to be very unlikely that we're going to be able to have our camera right in line with the vehicles more than likely we're going to have some kind of an offset situation like this where our cameras over here off to the side somewhere and then looking across at the vehicle lanes this way um, 12 foot installation height that would probably work we'll we'll leave that uh, for now field of view with 61 feet we know that's going to be too wide to get our vehicles most of the time uh, let's take this down to something that's going to be maybe closer to the equivalent of a couple of lanes of traffic. So you see, when we do that, when we've closed that down, um, tightened our viewing angle, now you start to see where we've got, um, in this quick layout, this cone, this colored in uh, part of the cone appears here, showing us where we'd be able to capture license plates, at least from this one vehicle right here. And you can see as I move it, it's showing me that offset to the camera angle there that you know we're at 27 degrees remember our maximum offset we said there was going to be 30 degrees for this design so we've got a lot of flexibility there um, and then if i move outside of that you see that 
that degree offset number turns red. We're at 31.5, so we're technically outside of our uh, of our design spec or our design goals. Uh, this ca this car here, based on this field of view that we have currently in this camera position, you know, could easily wind up because it's a little further away, either too far away from an angle perspective or just outside of that cone. Um, so you can see, you can start to see where where Placing this camera, if we want to say get two lanes of traffic, you know, we could come theoretically closer to the closer to the vehicles. We'd get more, you know, we get more theoretical pixels on target. But putting this too close to the vehicles, you can see we've got to turn this angle so much to get a view of the license plates that you're not going to be able to actually read them. And you see, this is what uh, if we go to the 3D view, you can kind of start to see what it would look like in real life. That we're kind of shooting across. The front of the vehicle there you're just not going to be able to get that plate at this angle um, so i'm going to move the camera back a little bit here and we're going to adjust this so that we start getting something that's uh closer to within our our design specifications there So here we've got something that's uh, something that's pretty good. We can show you in this case, like if we switch over to the 3D view, we would theoretically be able to see both of these vehicles. We've, we've got a good um, insulation height and downward angle. We've covered some of that in some of the other tutorials. How to you know how to of course tweak those parameters, but you can see here, pretty much anywhere a plate would be on the front or on the back of a vehicle, we'd be able to see it pretty well. Uh, looking real quickly here, we've got. 12 degree downward angle that's really good we're, we're at uh, 70 you know almost 80 pixels per foot we've got good pixel density there and so you can see here where um, we're covering those those lanes so we can get uh, let's say the two vehicles aren't approaching at exactly the same time we can come back to our 3d view and and check and make sure that um, let's say this is a parking entrance or a two-lane street or a tolling situation you know two vehicles coming through this lane they can be pretty well offset um, and we're still going to be able to get enough detail to read plates on both vehicles at at least some point as they come through that field of view and if they're if they're a little bit over to the side of the you know to the extreme edges edges of the side of the road we're still getting good parameters there or if uh, you know one of them happens to be driving for whatever reason switching lanes um, as they as they move from one to the other again even with a slight offset to the vehicle we're getting good detail on those simulated license plates here so let's take a look at a couple other features of the design tool that we can use to help optimize our designs uh, as we've been making changes here to you know camera parameters we can go over to the 3d view tab and check out how that would look there that's very helpful to see if if we're going to be able to cover like saying you know enough of the vehicle and the angles just kind of look right and we've got enough pixel density and things like that um, but you can also get that 3d view right over here by popping out this window so now as we're making changes to the field of view or you know as we're looking at how cars come through we can see that modeled live in real time so we've got the live 2d and 3d view as we change things around what's this going to do for our design how's it going to change things um, so that, that's real handy the other thing that uh, can be nice, especially if we're thinking a little bit forward to a proposal when we maybe present this to a customer, I'll just highlight this group here and do a control C and a control V, a pretty standard paste, um, and move this down. So now you see we've we've made an exact duplicate of everything we're working with. The, the camera specifications, the camera task, the all the models, all the objects. But let's take camera two and maybe say instead of 1080p, what happens if we make this a four megapixel camera and you see in the four megapixel camera we haven't really gained much in terms of because of the angles and the coverages and things like that we haven't really gained much in terms of, of width a four megapixel camera isn't going to necessarily say let us cover three lanes in with these parameters but we can see where the coverage area 
the, the, the pixel density area that meets our criteria that we set up in the initial design has expanded out. So what this really means is that it's just going to give us a larger area of coverage where we have an opportunity to capture those those license plate details sufficiently. So that can be helpful, say, you know, again, depending on we don't always know what the traffic flow is going to look like or could there be something in the way at certain times or vehicles too close together, things like that. So you know, depending on, on pricing, we might want to show in our proposal how going from a 1080p camera is maybe the lowest practical resolution we'd want to use to a four megapixel camera, something that's going to probably cost a little more both for the camera and also for the back end storage, but how that's going to increase our our coverage area here pretty, pretty significantly. We're going to be um, probably adding another third or so to the overall uh, effective working distance so that can be that can be very helpful to just do that copy paste try different camera designs and kind of show them side by side or uh, again we're looking at where this camera would be placed if we move, uh, move it back here to a 1080p camera we can look at what happens if we go maybe closer to the vehicles is there a way to to adjust these parameters and find a location that's closer to the vehicles or what happens if we you know it turns out that this is our optimal design but we know that there's a light pole a little further away can we get to some parameters with this 1080p camera where we're further away uh, based on other considerations that might be you know present in the site can we make this work at a distance and you know the answer again it could be yes it's possible to make a a further away distance you know moving another 10 feet or so it, it can work um, causes us to narrow our, our field of view that's another way to increase the the pixel density effective cone area here because we you know narrowed the field of view spread the pixels over a smaller area um, but we may run into other problems at those you know at those ranges or not that might might, might turn out to be a better uh, position but this lets us just show by copying and pasting that group we can just kind of quickly play with these models side by side and better hone in on what's going to be the optimal design for this uh for this project